Thank you, Mr. Clerk. Um, Mr. Clerk, uh, could you please call a, um, this is a, uh, let, let me start off by saying this is the uh, Technology and Utilities Subcommittee meeting, is scheduled for 5.30. Um, so I would ask, uh, I want to start the meeting now, so I ask Mr. Clerk to please call the roll. Uh, Chairman now Here. Uh, Council Drinkwater? Here. Council Samaras? Here. Three present. Well, thank you, Councillor Samaras and Councillor Drinkwater, for joining us from remote. Also with us uh, in person, we have Councillor Rita Mercia and Councillor Ronnie Elliott, as well as Councillor Rock, who just stepped out. Uh, so, um, uh, you know, what come about to this is because uh, a while back, I believe in 2009, in March, the Council had voted uh, to have the managers uh, into, into, into some agreement with Site 5 to work to see maybe a possibility to bring in a new service provider to the city. Uh, you know, working on that, uh, we have uh, our city solicitor, um, uh, uh, Christine O'Connor, and uh, also the commissioner at the time, um, now commissioner, uh, DPW is um, uh, Ms. Uh, uh, Clancy. Um, so uh, that said, I know we understand that uh, internet access affect and facilitated every aspect of our life, particularly given the COVID-19. Uh, so I, let me just start with the um, uh, either um, uh, uh, City Solicitor uh, O'Connor or Commissioner Clancy can uh, give us an update as to uh, where we at with regard to Site 5 um, uh, negotiation or working with them. Please. So I think Christine Clancy can give an update as to um, where we are with sci-fi from a technological standpoint. Um, the, um, um, there are very few communities that have this, uh, this contract uh, underway. And in fact, um, we are waiting for a, a test run in, in Salem. There were, uh, there were other issues that, um, that were really, as part of our due diligence, um, still looking at with respect to this particular contract. But um, just in terms of the, um, uh, the, the impact of this contract, it's in order to, to get these services up and running, uh, this would be a multi-year um, approach. And, um, probably at least two to three years. Uh, Christine could probably speak more in terms of the actual uh, time involved. It would involve micro-trenching all, all of our streets. And, uh, and again, this would not be free internet access. It would not be access that would be um, uh, available to address the issue that we have right now with the, um, with the school departments that is now being addressed uh, through, through hotspots. Um, so uh, there are reasons to, uh, to proceed cautiously with this particular uh, contract and with the technology that's being, um, that, that's being proposed. Um, and I would uh, maybe ask Christine uh, Clancy to, uh, to sort of take it over from there. Thank you. So as far as this installation, as Christine O'Connor said, this is um, really a something that if the city was to move forward with, it really will impact every street in our city. So we have 235 miles of roadway um, micro -trench trenching in each of those streets um, that will really have an impact on every one of our roadways. Um, and so we that is something that we were from a technical perspective looking at just to understand how that might impact our infrastructure. Um, the city of Salem, Massachusetts is moving forward with a, I guess I would call a pilot. They're doing a 2000 linear foot installation in November. Um, and they've actually invited us to be, to, to observe that. So what they're doing is they're doing that installation and then they're going to see how it, uh, how it, how it takes over the winter. Cause one thing that we're really concerned in is with in, in uh, winter, New England winter, um, you know, roads can act in, um, in different different ways from other parts of the country in terms of that freeze thaw cycle. Um, so I think it really is important to to be, I guess, to be a part of this uh, this pilot that the city of Salem is doing. So that is that is at least from the from DPW and from engineering department's perspective, is we we want to observe that pilot and we have the opportunity to do so uh, in another city, not nearby city of Salem. 
Um, and so this, and if we do, if something was to move forward, this is a multi-year effort. So there'd be, you know, many there's permitting, there's a whole lot of uh, permitting through engineering, a whole process. And this would be at least a multi-year process. It could even be longer just because of the, the to actually install uh, micro trenching through every single street in the city. Um, and as, as mentioned, this is really just, the outcome of this is to provide a potential competition to the current vendors that we have in the city. Thank you, Commissioner. Um, Christian Chris, O'Connor, do you have anything to add to it? Okay, thank you. Um, Councilor um, Drinkwaters or Councilor Samaris, any question? Not at this point. Thank you, Councilor Samaris. Councilor Drinkwaters, any question? Yeah. <clears throat> Thank you for the information. In, in terms of the uh, the, the Salem uh, pilot, there, there's really no, um, would it be accurate to say that there's really no um, cost to the city there? It's a, this is a private investment um, being made by, by a company. Uh, is, is, that, is that correct to characterize right. it? Yeah. As far as, I mean, as far as the, the <laughs> pilot that's happening, they, the city of Salem, uh, my under I don't, we don't know, I guess, the details of that contract, but right, this is something that the uh, potential uh, company would be doing a pilot to, and they would potentially be doing the install throughout the city. I don't know if Christine O'Connor, do you want to elaborate on that at all? Uh, right, I so. That through Mike, but I, I can only take it through Mike, just so you know, it all has to go through Mike. But if it's Molly's Nails Boutique, I've already got that listed there. Okay. I'm sorry, wait, I think people are calling me out on this. Sir, 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 Sir O'Connor, I heard you were going to add something to it. Sure. So uh, with respect to the, uh, the structure of the contract, um, the, uh, uh, what is attractive is that it would be a way of doing it um, and there wouldn't be a, um, uh, a monetary outlay for the city. But by the same token, uh, part of what uh, we need to be cautious about is um, what is uh, arguably, what is the value that is, um, that is being given in exchange for that. Uh, what's, what has been challenging here is um, really the trying to, to determine that and, um, and trying to make sure that whatever we uh, wind up with, we uh, obviously, everyone wants um, as much choice and competition as possible. It's key, it's vital, but by the same token, uh, we also don't want to have something that um, uh, for the next um, uh, 20 years or 40 years that, um, uh, that doesn't really allow for much more competition and, um, and we have sort of a monopoly on a particular type of product and a particular type of um, technology and service provider. So there haven't really been a lot of other communities that have been, at least in, um, in this area of the country, that we can look to as a um, as a model, and um, and so um, it's um, sometimes it's great being first and being the first one out, uh, but other times it 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 um, uh, it carries a weight, and so that's what uh, that's also something that is being carefully uh, carefully looked at as we uh, as we proceed and continue with negotiations. Thank you. Um I think the idea is correct, though. You look at option, give, provide resident of low the option, and maybe the opportunity for a, a new providers that would certainly uh, is good uh, for low resident in terms of service and also cost. At the same time, too, you, certainly you're going to have to balance the impact on a roadway, if any. Uh, of course, it's going to be about what impact would that be offset by you know, the benefit that would be provided to the resident of low. Um, that said, um, uh, let me just uh, ask if... Um, uh, That's a question. Go ahead, uh, uh, Councilor Samaras. Mr. Chairman, okay, uh, to Christine Clancy, uh, what are the companies of co uh, competition for this type of, you know, value in the city of Lowell at this point? As far as other companies that would be doing the micro trench, like this type of... Well, uh, doing something, uh, offering something. Do we have uh, anybody else that can offer this? 
I mean, to my knowledge, there hasn't, there was an RFP put out uh, for this type of, for this uh, potential installation. And there hasn't been any other vendors that I'm aware of. I mean, there's other providers um, outside of, outside of um, Lowell that, you know, there's Comcast, there's Verizon, but beyond that, that's where um, I, right now there's no other vendors that I'm aware of. The, the, issue, the issue that I've always had, and many of my constituents have always complained about, is really the lack of competition, uh, especially being a city that only has Comcast. And there are a lot, I mean, I still get a, a lot of calls, of basically of people who are angry about the service that Comcast provides. Is there any chance that with this type of issue that Verizon could be uh, a competitor in this area along with Comcast? I mean, these are two major companies that, you know, there are other issues that they can help us deal with. I imagine, I mean, so we're per this, this project would, per if you're moving forward, would provide a conduit for someone to provide internet in the future. So that could very well be Really, I guess what I say could be really anyone, whether it be someone large like Comcast or Verizon. I know there are other um, popping up in other parts of the country. There are other um, companies that are just not as large scale. I guess if this is this, as Christine O'Connor says, this is really new to our area um, in New England. Um, our city of Salem is really that first, the first city that is going forward with this. So I think it's something that be interesting to see what type of competition they attract. Um, and then as far as, I mean, I know there's other, uh, this is happening in, on the West Coast and the Midwest, but I guess we really haven't seen it happen in the Northeast. So it's hard to, I guess, understand what the potentials are just because it is so you know, new, uh, it's a new model. Well, to, uh, thank you. Uh, to the city solicitor, the, the, one, the issue that I had is one, as uh, Commissioner Clancy spoke about the trenching, I mean, we repaired a lot of streets here, and, uh, and I would find it hard to see a lot of these streets dug up again. Uh, you know, we've done so much work in that area. But would this company put us in a position where is it, there's no free ride? So what I'm thinking about is that if they come in, they're going to say, it's us and no one. And, and no one. We've, we've invested X amount of dollars. Our expectation is that uh, we're going to control the situation. Uh, is that a possibility that that could happen? Yeah, that's exactly when I was um, when I was referring to the being careful about the the long term effects. That is exactly the type of long term effect that I am um, um, sort of cautioning us about. That we do not want to be in a contract for the next twenty years or even forty years, where uh, somebody has come in and um, uh, and used our city streets to um, lay their technology and the end result, even though it started as a bid to get more competition for the service, it ends up being a, um, uh, something that strangles competition because if this is a technology that is uh, eventually the way of the future, um, there has to be a way of, um, uh, of doing it so that there is more than one provider. Um, so that's something that we are uh, carefully looking at, and it's something that we would um, we'd want to make sure that the city is not, uh, whatever it gets, it's not going to be, residents are not going to be left in a situation like that. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Thank you, Madam Solosa. Thank you. Um, Councillor Rock, have a question. Councillor uh, Rock, please. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. It's more uh, a question, but more, I guess, a comment. You know, I, I heard both the solicitor and, and uh, Commissioner DPW state that, you know, this hasn't really happened in this part of, of the country. Uh, and you know the reason why is because it makes no sense. Uh, you know I hope that Lowell's uh, involvement in this is just to watch Salem and, and see what happens. And the other reason why I know vendors do this is because the amount of cost uh, to them. You know they can say it's not free for for the citizens or for Lowell, but you know once this, um, if if the city decision is ever made to put this in, in in Lowell, you're talking years of installation, tearing up roadways, um, and the technology can be totally different by the time this project is halfway done, not even f uh, fully complete. Um, you know, I like this is, you know, idea is, is peddled by someone in the school department to, to you know, and act like this is gonna be put in in three or four weeks. It, you know, it's not the case. Um, you know, and other than just observing how it happens, 
out to 2,000 feet in, in Salem. Uh, I think we should be very, very careful of making any other commitment whatsoever uh, to something like this. You know, you're, what you're doing is, is that you're giving a second-rate service company um, first-rate um, use of your city. Uh, and, you know, the speeds and the storage um, does not compare to, you know, people hate to hear it, Comcast and Verizon. It'd be much more beneficial, I believe, to try to work something out with Verizon um, to see what they could do uh, than, than do something like this, which I think would cause um, years of, um, of just, you know, collateral um, quality of life issues uh, and then have to pay a super premium uh, to utilize it because of the amount of uh, money and time uh, a company like Sci-Fi would put in. Thank you. Thank you, Councillor Rook. Councillor uh, Mosi, anything? Thank you, Councillor Mosi. Um, so, uh, anything else with regard to? I would, I would just urge, you know, as you know, indicated by uh, Councillor Rook, I'm, I'm sure uh, the rest of the council or the subcommittee uh, 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 share that concerns that we, we, we hear you, uh, um, uh, Solicitor O'Connor, that we will approach this with caution. Uh, that we uh, we need to continue uh, uh, watching the uh, the Salem pilot as as it's going right now, uh, because as you indicated, both of you did, uh, Commissioner Clancy is as well. That we uh, this is a long term project. Therefore, we have opportunity to you know to to see the pilot what what happened in Salem, uh, whether or not uh, that we, we we can afford that uh, the 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 impact as well as the benefit. Can it can it one balance one tip the skill than other. Um, that's, that's that. So anything else to add on this? Because we know, I know that we have uh, Craig Frank is coming, right? Uh, he's on if you want me to patch him in. Yeah, if, if we, right. can, we, can, uh, we can put him on. Craig, uh, Craig Franks? I'm here. Here. Yes, yes, we see you. Uh, thank you. Uh, you are the senior uh, governor, uh, government advisor affair, go, 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 government affair to the Comcast. Is that correct? Correct. Thank you. Thank you for joining us. Um, as you know, the, you know um, the the COVID-19 really highlights some of the disparity, uh, particularly with the this, uh, school kid. So anything that you know the Comcast can provide uh, to family during this time of challenge is greatly appreciated. So I just want to hear some of the things that Comcast is doing uh, or has been doing and continue to do for uh, the children of low, uh, particularly the student. Please go ahead. My pleasure. Yes, thank you for the opportunity. Um, we do we have had a program for many years, almost a decade now called Internet Essentials, which is uh, a low cost uh, program that started out um, for students who receive um, uh, free or reduced price uh, lunch at school. Um, the, the program now has been expanded to include just about anybody who receives some kind of public assistance. And um, what it is is uh, broadband internet in your home. It's not a hotspot. It's a, it's a, a Wi-Fi router in your home for $9.95 a month. And there are no other charges. And um, I am pleased to um, tell the committee that uh, recently we have um, created a program, it's called Internet Essentials Partnership Program, uh, that we have offered to school departments and nonprofits throughout the country to provide this uh, program uh, to sort of have a, a public-private uh, partnership to provide internet to, say, students uh, who can't afford it, wouldn't otherwise be able to afford it. Um, and <clears throat> the nice thing about this is that the 90 day, 90 day look back is waived. Normally under Internet Essentials, if you're a full price paying uh, internet customer for, for uh, in Comcast, we won't let you sign up for Internet Essentials. But if you're sponsored by say a school department or a nonprofit, um, we waive that. We've also waived um, short term debt uh, that you might have with the company. So it's a great opportunity for many, many families who would not otherwise have the opportunity to sign up for broadband in their home to have it. And like you said, it's, it's essential at this time when uh, they may not even be able to attend a school in person. I have had um, conversations with a few school department officials about this um, in the past week or so. 
So when you talk about the uh, wave of 90 day uh, no look back or uh, look back wave, does that mean that the first three months of families of low income uh, can get the service at uh, no free for three uh, no cost for three months? Is that correct? No, that's not what it means. Uh, normally, uh, we do not allow families who are who have been internet customers with Comcast in the past. 90 days to sign up for internet essentials. I see. But if it's current program, if they're sponsored by a school school department or a nonprofit, then they can switch from paying full price with Comcast to internet essentials. We'll let them do that. Um, and anyone who signs up before the end of the year, whether we are sponsored or not, will get two free months. So the internet essential program is uh, for low income families only. Is that correct? Nine ninety-five 90, 90, uh, 90, 90, 90, per month. Nine ninety-five a month. Every school child in Lowell is eligible. Every um, school child. Because because um, more than half of the students in Lowell receive reduced price school lunch. So every school child in Lowell is eligible. How how does one go about to apply for that? They um, they can. Um, apply either through their through their phone or through an internet connection at um, they can look up internet essentials on the internet or you can just go through me um, I'm happy to um, direct people to the right the right place if you're a, a school department official or if you're a nonprofit um, director or something like that and you're interested in hearing about how you might be able to sponsor people and partner with us um, I can handle that so if we could, maybe after the hearing, you can send those informations to us uh, so that we can do a, you know, branch it out to every organization, every, you know, internet, every uh, social media is out there that this, mm -hmm. is, uh, uh, this is available so to all students low at night, 95 per month. So, so suppose you have, this is access to internet, but the other things too is that the, uh, the need for, if you have like four kids, you have sibling inside the house, so the internet's going to be slow. So, is there any upgraded at no cost or a little cost? The speeds have been upgraded, um, and um, in fact, they've been upgraded every year of the program. The program's been around for about a decade now. Um, so you can, it, it's a very good connection. You can, uh, you can stream videos on it if you want to. Uh, maybe you can't stream videos and then have everybody doing Zoom meetings at the same time. Um, but it is, um, it is a solution to remote learning. And that is what it is intended for. And it is much better than, say, a hotspot, which might not even be close to your house. It might be um, a really slow connection. So um, let me just go to um, Councillor uh, Rook and then if Councilor Drinkwater or Councilor Samaras have any questions, just signal and I'll I get to you, okay? Councilor Rook, go ahead, sir. Uh, thank you, Mr. Chairman. I want to take a second to thank you for having Mr. Franks uh, here this evening. Uh, as a chairman, I think some of the information that we've learned tonight um, is invaluable for Lowell students. Uh, Mr. Franks, $9.95 a month for any um, low-income student in the city of Lowell, that's correct? Correct. When was the first time that this had uh, have, you, have you told this to the school department at all? I've had, um, in the past, I've had meetings with um, a, a, a prior um, uh, superintendent. Um, the, I haven't uh, yet met with the current superintendent, but um, I did speak recently with um, a school official who was on the phone with me with, um, with Mr. Fernandez from, um, from M MIS. Um, her name is escaping me right now. But just uh, in the past couple of weeks, I've talked about this. Okay, so the first conversation you've had with the school department, this administration, was a couple of weeks ago? Yes. And you're offering nine ninety five a month for any low-income student in the city for Comcast speed and Comcast storage? Any public school student in, in Lowell can have this. I, I, you know, I know our mayor is here, and I'm hoping that, you're, Mr. Mayor, you're hearing this, and, and somebody can bring this to the superintendent's office uh, attention because you know as we talked about earlier this sci-fi idea is silly at best uh, and to have the option of paying 10 bucks on uh, to have the same service that if somebody's paying a hundred bucks which you know which freely admit I am for 
uh, which I'm content with, um, you know, Mr. Franks, um, should have been known months ago, not two weeks ago. And that's another disservice to our kids of what we're having here tonight. And again, um, Chairman uh, Noon, this is a credit to you for having Mr. Franks here because he wasn't here and we didn't know that. Um, kids that need to learn, that can't learn right now because of, again, a silly hotspot idea which doesn't work. Um, for 10 bucks a month, I'm sure there's plenty of donations available that can get most all our kids uh, internet service so they can learn. Um, you know, the, we have a very busy agenda, but this is probably the most important thing we're going to take out of this evening. Uh, and Mr. Franks, I hope that you pass this information along uh, to the mayor's office, uh, to the city manager's office, and most importantly, to our superintendent's office. Thank you very much. Councilor, uh, Councilor Drinkwater, Councilor Samaris, any question for Mr. Frank? Oh, thank you, uh, Mr. Chairman. Uh, Mr. Frank, uh, you, I think there's going to be some clarification. So basically, any student or any family is eligible for that, even if they're not at the poverty line because of where low fits regarding, uh, you know, basic needs? Right, because uh, most, because more than 50% of your students are eligible for reduced price priced school lunch, that's a mouthful, um, all of your students are sort of auto approved for internet essentials. Now, so let me ask, uh, okay. say Can an I, elderly person who's on food stamps, they would also be eligible. Okay, I mean, I, I think that's, that, that's a lot, as Councilor Rook stated, that's a lot of good information, you know, that we need is now you're talking about senior citizens also. And, and so the thing is, if there is somebody who's been paying, we'll say it's $100, but it's a difficulty. Yeah, yes, I mean, so this has been, I don't mean to interrupt, but this is, this yeah. is the main hurdle for getting people on Internet Essentials. It's the 90 day look back. Um, yeah. As it's a program that's intended for people who can't afford, you know, can't afford, uh, who may find some way to afford Internet. Uh, uh, so, um, normally but, if you're paying full price for internet, if you have in the past three months, we won't let you sign up. But if, um, someone sponsors you through an agreement with Comcast it's okay. or a, a local nonprofit like kids in tech, for example, um, then, uh, we waive that 90 day look back and you can switch from your full price back you can switch from that onto the low price internet essentials. Otherwise, I mean, nonprofits will help because there, there are many families due to this epidemic that were or had the ability to pay, but at this present time, they can't. So uh, with that, you'll speed up the process, which will enable them to uh, obtain um, this type of right for their children, correct? correct. Okay. Correct. Thank you. Council Drinkwater, is any questions, sir? All set, Mr. Chairman, thank you. Thank you, sir. Um, with us also, we have Mia Leahy is also in the room. Um, so um, let me just um, back to um, this um, good news here. Uh, so if you already have internet, Mr. Frank, if you already have internet at the home and pay at, say, $70, $80 a month, you have to wait three months before that, that th 90 day look back before you can uh, 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 enroll in this internet essential program that offered by Comcast. Or, or you can have a nonprofit sponsor you. Is that correct, sir? You that, got it. That yeah. way, you, if, if a nonprofit sponsor you, say Boy and Girl Club or any of this nonprofit, that, that waived the 90 day look back. Is that correct, sir? That's exactly right. Okay, thank you. Um, I, know that, um, I know that our city, uh, the, the uh, low school department, Mr. Mayor, uh, did uh, receive a thousand uh, mobile homes hotspot at cost, right, Mr. Mayor? Uh, so, uh, so you can update us on this, and I know that they arrived today, and they're gonna get more, and, and it's paid for by the uh, the Department of, uh, of uh, Education. So, so you can, Mr. Mayor, go ahead, sir. Thank you. So we do have a, we had a, a grant that paid for some of these T-Mobile hotspots. 
But as we said, that I don't think the hotspots are effective as this program is going to be with Comcast. So um, I believe you dealt with uh, Robin Desmond out of the superintendent's office. So uh, and uh, our MIS. So we've been working on this to try to get kids connected. I I actually had a uh, Zoom meeting today with some fourth graders from the um, uh, the uh, uh, Pine, uh, the um, Patekaville Memorial School, and um, we got to get these kids on it because out of the maybe 15 kids in the class, um, I could only hear three of them. It, it was gargled, it was breaking up. So this is something that we, you know, and we've been pushing this at the school committee meetings. We have to get these kids connected so they can learn. It's hard enough to control 15, 20 kids on a Zoom meeting <laughs> when you can't hear them. It's even worse. Yeah. So this is much appreciated that we're all getting together and working on this, getting this going. Uh, now we just have to get the school department to uh, do the sponsorships and get these uh, families connected so the kids can learn. And I just wanted to make one point, too, what Councilor Noon had said. So if you have um, a, a student that's in elementary school and a student that might be in middle school, um, you can probably get two, maybe three Zoom meetings going, maybe two Zoom meetings in the house on this, Mr. Franks? Um, would that I be tough? I would have to test it for me. It's, um, it's uh, I think, 25 over three um, download ups, upload speeds. So um, I know that you can at least get a couple of Zoom meetings going on. All right. That's the only um, problem we have is you've got uh, kids in multiple grades and uh, they're doing different things on the computers all day. So, Mr. Frank, yeah, well, a couple of Zoom meetings should be pretty easy to handle. Um, I would be curious to know what the limit is. I'm not, I'm not quite sure. Okay. So, so Mr. Frank, uh, what can Comcast do for our teachers who have already have service, uh, but they, in, in, because of uh, remote learning, some their their own kid is at home and using internet also. So, so the internet is not fast enough. So, uh, what can you do for our teachers who need to upgrade their service? I'll have to look into it. I know that um, I've, I've heard of some pilot programs out there for um, for educators, and I'll have to see what um, what is available. I don't have any information on that at this time. I'm sorry. Please, anything you can do to help, really greatly appreciate it, given the fact that, you know, we may go full remote. We may. Um, right, Mr. Mayor? I hope not. I hope not. But, you know, so if that happened, we really need your help, Mr. Frank. Um, Councilor Rook have some questions. Yeah, so can you say again, I know the mayor has a couple of questions about Zoom meetings. Uh, with what the service that you're providing uh, for, for the 10 bucks a month, uh, you know, a Zoom meeting takes up very little of, of the data, correct? I don't think that's a, that's a, a big stress on. Right, not at all. So I, I think that, that would be fine. And again, I, I know it, um, and I know that, that you shut the mayor's uh, internet off uh, a little while ago, which we could talk about later on, but um, but just you know, and but just about some of the te technology, which I'm sure a lot of people are not familiar with, with what you're offering. You know, Comcast is is number one for a reason. It's because of the speed of the service, the clarity of the service, and the availability the availability of the service. That's correct, right? Yeah, I mean, we're we've been in. in uh in Lowell for 16 years and we're very proud of, we're very committed to the city and uh, we've invested hundreds of millions of dollars in our system there and I mean it works, it should work and if it doesn't, we want to know about it. Right, so you know again I think the city, I don't know, the school department through a CARES Act or through grants, um, is about $400,000 they had spent for hotspots. Um, you know, I'm no genius but you know divide that by 10, you have 40,000 uh, families in the city that qualify that could get Comcast internet for, for you know, right? So let's, you know, I think this information should be made very public to everybody. Uh, why it hasn't been done uh, months ago is, is again uh, beyond me, uh, but I'm glad that uh, the, the, the mayor is here. I hope that the school department is listening um, and, you know, with what uh, we are forecasting to go forward. Uh, I think that this information is essential um, so little kids don't fall further behind than they already have. Thank you, Mr. Franks, and I uh, thank you, Mr. Chairman. 
Mr. Frank, anything to add? To no, uh, nothing to add, but please don't hesitate to reach out to me. Uh, if you have any questions, you want to follow up, um, I'm here. My cell phone number is 617. Um, actually, I don't know my cell phone number. <laughs> um, I never have to call myself. Oh, I have it, 617-862-8437. That's it. That's yep. it. Thank you very much. Yep. Please don't hesitate to give me a call. Well, by now, the resident of Lowell all have your number. So <laughs> don't blame me that they bring you off the hook. Uh, but anyway, um, I appreciate you being here. But I, I also would ask you to please look into, I'm no kidding, helping uh, if need for upgraded for teachers in Lowell. I will, of course. Thank you. Um, Chris O'Connor, any, anything else? Sir, Solicitor O'Connor? No, the only thing that I would just say is just as a reminder, um, I know that I know that the council was interested in, in both sci-fi as well as these ideas. Um, but again, as a, uh, you know, under a plan E form of government, it's um, these are contracts that are negotiated by by the manager uh, and, uh, and not the council. And um, and so um, uh, we'll uh, we'll make sure also that the school department reaches out to Mr. Franks and Comcast and uh, that that information to whatever extent it wasn't available before uh, is is but I just wanted to um, um, sort of put some further context plan E context into this conversation. Thank you, uh, Solicitor O'Connor. Um, anything else from Council Drinkwater, Council uh, Samaras, before I go to Councillor Rock, he has a question or comment. Thank you, sir. Uh, Councillor Rock, go ahead, sir. I, um, Madam Solicitor, I know you said that the council can't get involved in any type of contracts or contract negotiations. Can us as a council, with the information that's been shared tonight, could, could we request of a manager just to get out of it altogether? Get out of... Um Get out of what? Negotiations with sci-fi or with, with anything as far as, I mean, I, on top of what we yeah. know now with, with Comcast and what the service that they're offering, um, yeah. you know, we, if a motion is made tonight, the council meeting just to say, you know, cease and desist, is that, is that I guess, legal? Yeah, so this was something that I think, um, um, I, I'm not really clear exactly how it happened, but uh, this became a contract that was spearheaded by the council. Um, which is um, which is not only unusual, but um, the um, it is not a it is not a best practice. Um, so um, yes, if the council um, felt that um, um, they no longer wished the administration to um, uh, to spend time on on sci-fi um, in this particular case, that would be appropriate because that's frankly how this all started. And could the council request of the manager or, or of yourself to reach out to Mr. Franks at Comcast to get started on, on this idea? Sure, absolutely. We could do that and, um, and be happy to um, uh, provide a report to the council as to how those negotiations um, um, are playing out. Okay, thank you. Thank, thank you, um, Madam. Solicitor. Um, all right, that said, um, I want to hear um, the motion to adjourn uh, from uh, committee member. So moved. Second. Second. Mr. Clerk, roll call, please. Council no. Adjourn, yes. Council Samaras. Yes. Council Drinkwater. Yes. Three yes. That's quick.